Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing my favourite video that I do every year or at least since I have started Booktube. It is honestly it's one of my favourite videos to film. It's not one of my favourite videos to edit but they are definitely some of my favourite videos to film and watch as well. So um, today we're going through my 2022 bookshelf tour. So what I'll kind of say before we start is I'm splitting this video into two parts because if I was to mesh it all together, we'd be here forever. <laughs> so in this very first part, we'll be going through all of my books on this main bookshelf behind me. And then in the second part, I'll be going through all of the books everywhere else in the house. <laughs> so we have two trolleys that I'll go through in the second part and also three shelves up there on the wall. I don't think you can see them, but they're above my desk. And then I also have some shelves inside my desk that I store books on. So that'll all be in the second part of this video. This bit part of the video will specifically be for this. <laughs> but anyway, since this video is going to be as long as it is on its own, um, let's just get straight into my 2022 bookshelf tour part one. So a couple of things before we start. This is obviously like my main bookshelf and I do have to leave in a little bit. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to get this big main bookshelf out of the way before I have to leave. But if the lighting changes, maybe like midway through this video, that's why. But um, also I do have a tripod that's now tall enough to reach this top shelf. But the problem is, is I don't have much space to give you an overview of the entire thing. But this very top shelf is my um, like famous classic fantasy series. So we start over here with... Um, my Game of Thrones collection or my Song of Ice and Fire collection. So um, in terms of the books, I have Fire and Blood, which is one of the first prequels over here. Um, that is the one that's going to get adapted hopefully this year. I've seen the trailer yesterday. It, it looks terrible, but I will remain hopeful for the fact that this is all we've got left after the end of Game of Thrones. So after Fire and Blood, I have all of the graphic novels that are have been released so far so the entire game of thrones book is finished that has all been adapted into graphic novels and then we have three volumes of clash of kings i don't know if they're doing a fourth because i feel like where volume three of a clash of kings ended is where like the book ended but i could be wrong since it's been so long since i finished clash of kings honestly like if you don't want to watch the show and you don't want to read the books i definitely recommend the graphic novels it, th this series translates so well into that kind of um media so if you're looking to get into a song of ice and fire or a game of thrones but you don't want to waste your time with the show and you don't want to waste your time with the books definitely check out the graphic novels so then i have three books on top of the graphic novels the one at the back the big one at the back is essentially like a history book for the world of ice and fire so this one is absolutely gorgeous this is um uh, essentially everything you need to know about the show Game of Thrones but it's absolutely gorgeous and I could not resist I could not resist putting this on my shelf and then finally we have um just Tyrion Lannister quotes which is also kind of cool and I really love this I got it for like three pound out of WH Smith because um I think they were trying to like sell out their stock so I love this so much <laughs> and then obviously I just have the entire um series that is out so far moving on into the middle I have Lord of the Rings. So I have the box set. This I don't know who published this box set, but Harper Collins. It's the Harper Collins box set. They have really beautiful covers. I would pull them out, but it takes a lot of effort to pull them out and put them all back in. So just trust me, they have beautiful covers. And then on top I have this little box set, which is essentially um, like I get once again like the lore of Tolkien's world, and um, that's in the Lord of the Rings. So David Day. Um, he goes into the language, the location, the battles, um, characters, just anything you can think of, anything you would ever want to know about The Lord of the Rings. David Day has a book for it. Um, and then finally, like everyone probably has this, but it's essentially just like, um, it's the Harry Potter side of my shelf. That dragon over there is not anything to do with Harry Potter. That is a dragon that Stefan got me for my 21st birthday. I absolutely love him. I called him Callan. He's great. He's sat there on my shelf, basically being a mascot for the entire shelf. So just in case you're interested. So on the shelf I just have this little like fake plant pot. I just thought they were nice. I wanted something else to kind of decorate my shelves with. 
and I saw these on N Morrison's for like three pound each so I got a couple of them you'll see the other one on the other side of my shelf but that's the only thing that sits on this shelf but in terms of the books all my books are organized as I said before in alphabetical order and I have hardbacks behind paperbacks just to maximize space so here's the part where I admit that not all of my books are in perfect order like they're not all ordered so perfectly classics and modern novels and they're not always in the perfect alphabetical order this is just what works for me considering I have so many books and so little space so that is why we have The Handmaid's Tale on this part of the bookshelf but these first two books are obviously The Handmaid's Tale and The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. I partly put these two together because I wanted them to be together because they're a duology um, and I didn't want to put the Taller Testaments novel over in my classics books because I do have other Margaret Atwood books on this cube. Then we have for the paperbacks we're starting with Dare Me by Megan Abbott or Abbott. I then have Children of Blood and Bone and Children of Virtue and Vengeance, a series that I am still in great need to get to. I then have The Hazelwood, The Night Country and Tales from the Hinterland by Melissa Albert. I then have a childhood favourite, Skellig by David Almond. Honestly, if you want your heart ripped out and put back together again, check out this book. I then have I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings and And Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. I then have Flowers in the Attic by Virginia Andrews. My other two uh, Margaret Atwood novels are Alias Grace and The Blind Assassin. And then I have one that I'm most excited for for this year and that is A Man Called Ovi by Frederick Bachman. I'm so looking forward to getting into Frederick Bachman this year. His ideas, his titles, his covers, absolutely everything just seems so fun, cosy, heartwarming, just absolutely everything and I'm so looking forward to this. So then moving on to the second cube, I do have one tall paperback which I'll show you in a minute that is at the back of these and that also just kind of goes with the maximizing space thing but first of all I have King of Scars and Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo and then my tall paperback is Queendom of the Seven Lakes Duology by A.B. Endicott. So then moving on into paperbacks the first two I have is Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. This honestly specifically Crooked Kingdom was a 2021 favorite. My god this was amazing. <laughs> I then have A Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan, Papillon by Henry Charrier. I then have three books by Agatha Christie in this box set. I'm not going to pull them out because it is a nightmare to get them back in without destroying them. So I have Dead Man's Folly, Ordeal by Innocence and Five Little Pigs. Here is the start of my underrated books, plays, short story collections because this, honestly, this is fantastic. This is probably one of the first books I absolutely loved and I've read it for university so I highly recommend this. This is A Taste of Honey by Sheila Delaney. The same could also be said for Up the Junction by Nell Dunn. If you have grown up at any point in time in Britain you will relate to something of this book. It's so fantastic. It's a short stories collection and I just I highly recommend. I then have The Never Ending Story by Michael End. Two books that very nearly traumatised me as a child. I have um, The Tulip Touch and Bad Dreams by Anne Fine. This is my original copy of Bad Dreams. It's so old. Then I have Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. This is clearly the shelf of underrated novels because this is another one that I feel like is so underrated. It's Translations by Brian Friel. Another one I read for university. Absolutely fantastic. Highly recommend. <laughs> and then finally for this cube we have The Thief Lord by Cornelia Funk. This is a movie that I loved as a kid but I didn't know that it was a book until I saw it in a charity shop. So this was a very interesting find I would say. <laughs> so then moving down to the first column, second row I think. First of all on this cube I have a little hedgehog candle holder. It's the cutest thing ever. Once again got this from Morrison's around about the same price as the um, plant pots. So um, absolutely obsessed with this. <laughs> so I'll go through everything that's not Neil Gaiman on this cube. First of all I have Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. So first for non Neil Gaiman books we have the... is this Discovery of Witches trilogy or the All Souls trilogy? So we have a Discovery of Witches Shadow of Night and The Book of Life by Deborah Harkness. Then the tall paperback at the back of the paperbacks is Neil Gaiman's 
Grunewin's script. This was solely written by Neil Gaiman, but um, the book itself was written by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. So this is the start of the Neil Gaiman collection. <laughs> so then moving on to this stack of books, which is all of my Neil Gaiman collection, that will go from top to bottom. The first one being American Gods, Fragile Things, Ocean at the End of the Lane, The Graveyard Book, Coraline, Stardust, Good Omens, which was written by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. And then finally we have Neverwhere. So then moving on to the next cube along, this is the second cube in the second row. So the second column, second row, um, and all I have to decorate the shelf is these little birthday bears. They sing happy birthday. I won't like press the button because once you start it, it doesn't stop like ever. Um, so, but yeah, it sings happy birthday. I got this for my 18th birthday, um, which was a very long time ago at this point. <laughs> so in terms of hardbacks, I have kind of broken the paperback really well on this shelf because I have these two Stephen King books on top of a stack of hardback Stephen King books and then I just have this other hardback here. So we'll do the Stephen King books last but um, actually maybe we'll just do the whole hardback last because that's going to take a while. But we have this stack of books here. This is organised. So this is H and this is K. So they are, the alphabet's going like up the way and then here is the rest of the K's on the, um, the side here. So starting it from the bottom this time. I have Star of Acre by Andrew Michael Hurley, Sophie's World by Justine Garder, The Left Hand of Darkness and Earthsea, the first four books by Ursula K. Le Guin. One of my favourite books of all time and my favourite contemporary of all time, Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. This is a Scottish book by a Scottish author in case you're interested. I then have The 100 Year Old Man Who Climbed Out of the Window and Disappeared by Jonas Donison. And then finally for the pile I have Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. I then have the series that is slowly disappointing me. This is the Nevernight series by or the Nevernight trilogy by Jay Kristoff. So there's Nevernight, God's Grave and Dark Dawn. Nevernight was amazing. God's Grave was very disappointing. Dark Dawn is, is, is intimidating me for the fact that God's Grave was so bad. <laughs> And then finally, before we get into the books at the back, we have You by Caroline Kepnes. So first for the hardbacks, we have Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. Then I have these two Stephen King paperbacks. So these are The Shining and Misery. And then finally, I'm not gonna pull these out one by one and show you them because they are massive and they're heavy and it's gonna take a lot more work than it seems. So this is the four Stephen King hardbacks. So I have Insomnia, Dreamcatcher, Black House and Doctor Sleep. I then have Witches Steeped in Gold by Shannon Smart with this absolutely gorgeous cover. I'm just, I'm so obsessed with the green and the gold on this cover. The Deep by Rivers Solomon. Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. And Crier's War by Nina Varela. Then I have this stack of books here. So all of the books in this pile are pretty like tightly packed in there so I won't go and pull them all out but just so you know what's here we have The Ashes of London by Andrew Taylor, The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt, Affinity by Sarah Waters, Midnight my Sister Dodie and Little Darlings by Jacqueline Wilson. The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon and The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. So here we are at the main event, my classics collection. If I was able to see myself from the first time that I did a bookshelf tour to now, I would never ever believe that I managed to hoard this many classics in the space of like three years. Honestly, I don't know how this happened. This just kind of happened one day. One day I was organising my bookshelf and then all of a sudden I have too many classics and I'm starting to break too many rules. So um, essentially the exact same organisation method is put here but there is a lot of flexibility within the alphabet because of just space issues. But here we are at this first cube where I think the most of the hardbacks are and um, all we have for decoration is once again this other little plant pot, this artificial plant pot that I got from Morrison's for £3. So then getting into the books, I have the Fairy Tales and Stories of Hans Christian Andersen. This is the Knickerbocker Classic Editions. I have two more of these on my shelves. I honestly think these are great bind up collections if you're looking for some really beautiful um, bind ups of classic fairy tales. I got this one second hand but they they're usually quite expensive just for the fact that they are 
so elaborate, but absolutely love this um, copy. So then starting with some Jane Austen, um, I have a Jane Austen bookshelf, a uh, book set, box set, and also two of the, um, what do you call them? The cloth bound classics, but this is my Penguin leather bound edition of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. I'm pretty sure I got this for my 18th birthday. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's one of my favourite copies of Jane Austen I have and I do love these um, editions so much even though I only have two of them. I then have this gorgeous copy of the complete poems and songs of Robert Burns. I then have some Angela Carter and technically Angela Carter starts over in this next cube but you'll see why I've put these Angela Carter books here. So I have The Magic Toy Shop. This is published by um, Virago Modern Classics and I think it's their 30th um, anniversary edition and um, so it's absolutely gorgeous once again and then I have this gorgeous collection of Angela Carter's uh, fairy tales which is uh, once again published by Virago. I don't know if it's Virago Modern Classics or just Virago. I think it's just Virago but once again this is um, probably one of the most essential classic fairy tale books if you are interested in fairy tale retellings and specifically feminist fairy tale retellings. Highly recommend this one. And then finally I have this very weird paperback copy of The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. You should see the size of the writing in this copy. Like as if this this comment, this trilogy wasn't going to be hard enough to read <laughs> but I'm super excited to read this. Um, I got it specifically so I could annotate it. So starting with the paperbacks I have The Complete Fables by Aesop, Selected Poems by Anna Akhmatova, Little Woman by Louisa May Alcott. I then have this little stack of Jane Austen's books here. I don't want to pull them all out because once again this is another box set where it's a nightmare to put them all back in but I have this cloth bound copy of Sense of Sensibility which I took to university once with me and water got spilt in my bag and <laughs> destroyed most of the cover um, which I'm kind of crushed at but um, it's still a really nice book anyway. I also have Sandy Tun by Jane Austen obviously and then I have the entire collection here so we have Lady Susan and Other Works, Mansfield Park, Emma, Persuasion, Pride and Prejudice, Sense of Sensibility and Northanger Abbey. I then have The Monk and the Hangman's Daughter by Ambrose Bierce. The Selected Poems of William Blake. This is in the Wordsworth Poetry Collection which or Poetry Library. Lady Audley Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braden. One of my absolute favourites. The Last of Cherie by Colette. This is another one of like I wouldn't say my favourites, I really enjoyed it. I read it for university, but it's a very interesting look at gender relations in post-war France. So moving on into the second cube, there is no hardbacks on the shelf, so it's only paperbacks on these hardbacks here, but we have The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Then we have perhaps one of the most dramatic stacks in my bookshelf. This is The Terror of Bronte. So I have all of my Bronte novels here, which includes, I think, four copies of Wuthering Heights. Can you tell who my favourite Bronte sister is? But on, like once again, I won't pull any of these out except from these top ones because I really want to show you this one and this one. But anyway, we have um, Wuthering Heights, these two copies of Wuthering Heights. This is the Penguin Cloth Bound Edition. This was published in the 70s or 80s. I can't remember. But then we have the Wordsworth box set, which Stefan got me one year, I think, for my birthday. So we have Agnes Grey and The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte, Jane Eyre, The Professor, and Shirley, and Villette by Charlotte Bronte and Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. So then these three books are the ones that sit on top of the Terror Pronte. So we have the Penguin Paperback Classic Edition of The Complete Poems of Emily Bronte. Then we have this gorgeous copy of Wuthering Heights, which is the Wordsworth Collector's Edition that Abby actually gifted me in November. And I'm just obsessed with it and I really wanted to show off because it's like the best, this is the most accurate copy. This is the most accurate cover for a Wuthering Heights novel ever. This captures the essence of Wuthering Heights the best. <laughs> and then I have this copy of Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte which is by Vintage Classics and I, once again I think it's an anniversary edition. Then squeezed in pretty tightly to the next um to these stack of books is The Plague by Albert Camus. I then have this Penguin Clothburn edition of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. I have this paperback copy of The Magic Toy Shop and 
uh, The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. I got this one for university, realised I loved it, and then when I saw the 30th an an anniversary edition by Virago, I had to pick that one up because this is such a very weird and interesting book and I really like Angela Carter. I then have this Penguin Paperback Classic Edition of the Selected Poetry of Samuel Taylor Coleridge and the Wordsworth Paperback Edition of Heart of Darkness and Other Stories by Joseph Conrad. So moving down to the third row, second col- no sorry, third column, second row, we have more classics, obviously. The only thing decorating this part of this cube, sorry, is this clock, which I got at a charity shop. So then we have this big stack of books here. None of them, none of these books technically relate to each other, except for Wilkie Collins was friends with Charles Dickens, and he, Wilkie Collins also references Robinson Crusoe quite a bit in the Moonstone, so that's like the, the very vague relation there. But at the bottom here we have The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer, The Woman in White and The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins, Robinson Crusoe and A Journal of the Plague Year by Daniel Defoe. And then finally we have Great Expectations, Hard Times, Nicholas Nickleby, A Tale of Two Cities and Bleak House. I don't know if these are in chronological order but I know that these are. Um, but essentially this is this is a lot of Dickens which I have committed to reading even though Hard Times is the most difficult book I've ever read <laughs> but I'm really excited for the big chunky ones ironically. I then have Zofloya or The Moor by Charlotte Dacra. I have Netochka Nezvanova by Dostoevsky. This is an unfinished work. And then I have Crime and Punishment and The Idiot, also by Dostoevsky. So I have another Vintage Classics Anniversary Edition. This is Silas Marner by George Eliot. And then I have T.S. Eliot, The Wasteland and Other Poems. Moving along, I have one taller paperback behind here, but just to start with, I have these two little pigs that sit in the front of my shelf. I got these from a charity shop as well. I just thought they were cute. Um, my gran also had a lot of like ornaments like these when we were younger so um, <laughs> I wanted to get them for like nostalgic reasons as well as they were really kind of adorable. <laughs> so the one taller paperback that I have at the back of this shelf or this cube is Carmilla by Sheridan Le Fanu. I then have these three paperbacks that sit on top because there is no other space for them. So I have The Count of Monte Cristo, The Three Musketeers, 20 Years Later and The Man in the Iron Mask all by Alexander Dumas. This is obviously very separate from these three. This is The Three Musketeers trilogy and um, this is just one of the most daunting gothic romantic novels that I've ever owned. <laughs> I'm very, very excited for it. I then have The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco, The Great Gatsby by F. F. Scott Fitzgerald, Alone in Berlin by Hans Falada, In a Glass Darkly by Sheridan Le Fanu, Light in August by William Faulkner, The Trick is to Keep Breathing by Janice Galloway. This is another Scottish novel. It's postmodern. It's written in a very interesting way. I have tried <laughs> To read it a little bit but it was very it hit very heavily on you know the the heart <laughs> so um i put it down for now but i am looking forward to finishing this at some point mary barton by elizabeth gaskell a scots queer by lewis grassic gibbon this is obviously another scottish novel that i've never read but i know that connor from connor stampanato read it and he did not like it so um i'm excited for it i think i'll like it but just so you know it's got conflicting opinions from Scottish readers. <laughs> I then have Brighton Rock, A Quiet American and The End of the Affair by Graham Greene. These two are absolute favourites. This one I haven't actually read yet. And I then have Against Nature by Joris Carl Heismans. I might be pronouncing that wrong but it's a very interesting novel and I think it's referenced in a picture, a portrait, nope a picture of the picture of Dorian Gray. Too many pictures and portraits in classic literature. <laughs> We're almost done with the big bookshelf. So this is the third cube and the third column. The third row and the third column and um, all I have decorating the shelf is this little pin that my gran gave me for my 21st birthday that sits on my shelves. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It's one of the cutest, most 
gorgeous things that I've ever owned. So I have a few paperback uh, hardbacks at the back so I'm going to just take these two off for the now. So we have another Knickerbocker classic edition, this is the Complete Grimm's Fairy Tales. I then have the Broken Wings by Khalil Gibran. So then in terms of paperbacks I have Dead Souls by Nikolai Gogol, The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. And then I have another big stack of books which is really hard to take apart and put back together because these two are not like stable up here like they don't have anywhere to like properly sit like against so they're straight which I know sounds silly but um it's a struggle that I have and I don't want to deal with it right now so <laughs> we have Les Mis and The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo, Tess of the D'Ubervilles by Thomas Hardy, The Iliad and the Odyssey by Homer, The Private Memoirs and Confessions of a Justified Sinner by James Hogg, The Complete Poems by John Keats, Bowen Back Black by Susan Hill and The Legends of Sleepy Hollow and Other Stories by Washington Irvin. I then have The Selected Poems by Thomas Hood, Goodbye to Berlin by Christopher Isherwoods, The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson, The Turn of the Screw by Henry James, Kim by Rudyard Kipling which I've only read a part of for university but it was a very interesting part that I read and I'm looking forward to finishing it, Letter from Birmingham Jail by Martin Luther King Jr and finally I have Gothic Short Stories by various authors. I feel like this is edited by David Blair though so I don't know why it's here but it is probably the only place it'll fit. So that's the end for this cube. <laughs> I'm hoping to film the rest of this before my camera battery, uh, sorry, my camera memory card runs out of space. But this is the fourth cube in the third row. So the only hardback I have back here is the complete tales and poems of Edgar Allan Poe. And once again, this is in the Knickerbocker classic editions. I then have Masks of Difference, Four Court Masks by Ben Johnson. In the wrong order, but the best I could do right now, this is Dubliner's Portrait of the Artist of Man and Ulysses by James Joyce. I then have another one of my favourite reads of 2021. This is The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. This is honestly one of the best books I've ever read. I highly recommend if you're into gothic romanticism. I then have The Princess and the Goblin by George MacDonald. The Vampire by John Polidori. This was written at the same time that Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein. It is a very interesting history not going to say that the same goes for the story itself. And then another stack of books I'm not going to bother pulling out one by one because it's way too difficult and I'm running out of space. So um, so we have Sons and Lovers by D.H. Lawrence, The Monk by Matthew Lewis, Picnic at Hanging Rock by Joan Lindsay, The Garden Party by Catherine, Mil Catherine Mansfield, 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, Rebecca by Daphne de Maurier, The Crucible by Arthur Miller, The Complete Fairy Tales by Charles Perrault, The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath and Eugenie Onegin by Pushkin. Alexander Pushkin, sorry. So we're now down to the final three cubes of the main bookshelf. This has been a very long day in terms of filming even just this part of the video. The first book I have, or the only hardback that I have on this cube is Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. This is in the Penguin Leatherbound editions. I did not like this when I originally read it but I'm keeping it just so I can reread it and decide what I want to do with it after my reread. So we then have this stack here which is essentially just authors with last names beginning with S. So um, we have The Complete Works of William Shakespeare. This is a Collins bind up edition. Then I have Macbeth by William Shakespeare which is in the Wordsworth editions. The Italian by Anne Radcliffe. Ivanhoe and Waverley and Rob Roy by Sir Walter Scott. The Turnip Princess and Newly Discovered Fairy Tales by this, this, this person. And then finally we have the Signet Classic edition of Plays by Bernard Shaw. Then I have the the selected poems and prose of Percy Bysshe Shelley. I have the complete short stories by Mary Shelley in this very weird paperback edition. Then I have the complete poetical works by Mary Shelley, Prospine and Midas and The Last Man by Mary Shelley. If you're wondering where my Frankenstein editions are, you will see <laughs> very shortly. Then the last book on this cube is A Grain of Wheat. Once again I don't know how to pronounce the author's name but I had to get this at the university. Haven't read it yet. <laughs> so moving on to the second last cube. I have a whole stack of Tolstoy back here so I'll take these out 
and I'll show you what's behind it. The Death of Ivan Ilyich and Other Stories, Resurrection, Anna Karenina, and The Beast Itself, War and Peace, which I read last year as like a challenge that I set to myself. I have a vlog up. I'm not very proud of the vlog and to be honest I do want to reread re re this anyway and take more time with it so there might be another reading vlog this year dedicated to War and Peace. So then in terms of the books at the front we first have Dracula by Bram Stoker which I still haven't read and honestly I don't even know if I will at this point but it's going to stay there until I make a definitive decision as to what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> Another absolute beast. This is The Fairy Queen by Edmund Spencer. This, this is all poetry. This isn't like, this is one massive poem for in the Renaissance that I'm dying to get to because it's going to be the biggest challenge of my entire life and I'm so looking forward to it. So then we have perhaps like my favourite feature on my bookshelf right now. This is the uh, vintage Russian classics. I absolutely love these so much. My parents actually gave me these for my Christmas this year. Um, they are in alphabetical order and technically some of these shouldn't be here but I wanted to keep them all together and since Tolstoy is at the bottom I thought I'd put them on this shelf. So in the vintage Russian classics uh, editions that we have. We have The Master and Margarita, Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky, Life and Fate by Vasily Grossman, Dr. Zivago by Boris Pasternak. Then we have another copy of War and Peace and another copy of Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. Then finally on this cube we have The Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole. So we've made it to the final cube of the main bookshelf. This is another one of my favourites because it has all my Virginia Woolf books. This is also where the rule of tall paperbacks and hardbacks to the back um, kind of breaks because I do have some paperbacks right back here that were once where my vintage Russian classics are but are now over here instead. <laughs> on this shelf we'll start with the books at the back. We first have the Penny Dreadfuls. This is a massive collection of classic horror stories. I then have this Canterbury classic collection of horror stories. This is classic tales of horror. This one is leather bound and has gold sprayed edges. It's absolutely amazing. It looks so epic. I've read some of um, these already and honestly I've never been more scared in my entire life when I was reading something so this is this is a great collection if you're looking for some classic horror stories. I then have Q Gardens by Virginia Woolf. This is actually published by Q Publishings and it's just a sort of short story that is based in Q Gardens and follows a snail that is watching all these other characters. It's very weird, very interesting and very beautifully written. So in terms of the paperbacks that are sitting back there, I have Ben Hart by Lou Wallace, Movern Collar by Alan Warner, The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton, and I have the collected poems of William Wordsworth in, once again, the Wordsworth Poetry Library, and also have the Penguin Little Black Classic Edition of Lyrical Ballads by William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge. So then, books at the front, we have the Penguin Clothbound Edition of the picture of Dorian Gray and then I also have the Wordsworth edition which I intend to annotate when I read it this year. I then have the plays of Oscar Wilde. This is the Collins classic editions. I kind of like these for how cheap they are but they're very small and very tough to open up so um, hit and a miss kind of. I then have the Aeneid by Virgil and then we have my Virginia Woolf collection. This has, this actually started with one Virginia Woolf book which I'm pretty sure I unhauled at some point and then I read Mrs. Dallary and I brought it back and I accumulated all of these last year in 2021. So I'll start from the top to the bottom because that's going to be the easiest but these are in chronological order with The Voyage out being the first one and Virginia Woolf's first book that she had written. So technically we're starting with the last book that she written, she had written or published, and that is The Years and Between the Acts. The Waves, which is her experimental novel, this is actually written um, almost entirely in like dialect. Orlando, which is a fictionalised biography. To the Lighthouse, which was another 2021 favourite. I haven't annotated it all the way, but my god, was this amazing. I'm actually rereading it and I got a tattoo. Um, dedicated to it because it's honestly one of the best books I've ever read. The same can be said for Mrs. Dalloway as well. This is the first Virginia Woolf book that I ever read and 
I'm obsessed. <laughs> Here is my current Virginia Woolf read. This is Night and Day and Jacob's Room. And then finally we have her first novel that she published which was The Void Out. So then we have two final books for this part of the Bookshelf Tour. We have Murder of a Lady, a Scottish Mystery by Anthony Wynne and The Collected Poems of WB Yeats. So that is all for the first part of my bookshelf tour. I hope you enjoyed and thank you so much for getting this far in the video if you have. Um, if you enjoyed the video please let me know by liking it and if you have any of the same books that I do in this part of the video let me know in the comments or if you yourself upload uh, bookshelf tours either as a video or um, as like a blog post or like bookstagram or anything like that please let me know in the comments because this is my favorite kind of content to consume at the start of the year so um other than that if you want more content from me all my social media is linked in the description alongside my book Sammy Noick and my blog which I just started kind of revamping earlier on this month I am trying to get consistent with uploading blog posts so over there you'll find some short stories and any video essay that I do I will write up um, like a, a actual physical written essay version of it and upload it over on my blog if you're interested in that. <laughs> but if you want more videos from me including the part two for this video make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading the second part of my bookshelf tour on Friday so and um, if you're interested in that, make sure you're subscribed. Other than that, that is all for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon for another video.